after you sat down, just tell them, turn to them and say, I don't know about you, but I know about me. And tonight is my night. Glory to God. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Katie, all of y'all for allowing us to come back to be here at Blue Mountain. And we're excited that they have decided that they might let us come back again. So praise the Lord. We're excited about that. It's wonderful. Wonderful to be here. Just great. And I thank you. Now, if y'all can't clap better than that, I may not come back. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a little encouragement, don't we? Hallelujah. So, praise God. I appreciate so much the praise and worship team. Thank you so much. Wherever, whatever happened to them, I see some of you. But anyway, praise God. Let's give them another hand. They did a great job. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. God is good. Oh, no telling what God might do tonight. No telling. Let me say this to you. If you have a handkerchief or cloth... I will be praying over them tonight, and you can come and just put them here, wherever. No, uh, Kleenex will not work. Uh, so it's got to be cloth. So again, you can bring it and put up here, and, and uh, anyway, so, so that we'll pray over it. Matter of fact, if you've got one off our table already, that we've already prayed over it, already anointed it with oil from Israel. And, uh, but anyway, so Jane, come let me show them what... Uh, we decided we didn't want to take anything home, so hallelujah. Uh, I hope you'll pick up one of these little slips of paper and connect with us. It's a way for you to keep up with us with our e-newsletters and everything that's going on. And uh, we, uh, I don't know, we want just to stay in touch with you. We do not ask you for money. We do not do anything like that. We try to encourage you and just keep you informed about what's going on, so we hope you will. Again, the uh, earlier... We sold one of our Afghans back there that uh, many people use. We don't, we don't have another one, but anyway, uh, you can order them, and anything you decide to order, we will pay the shipping, and it will come out this week. So if you want to get it, they'll mail it out immediately to you. They are beautiful. They're wonderful Christmas gifts. And the thing that's so wonderful about them, it came from a, when I was in North Carolina, a visitation, I mean a divine visitation that God gave me. And actually, that's what these handkerchiefs, if you bought one of our handkerchiefs, I see one opened here, is, of course, it has a, a dove with the healing streamers on it, and uh, we have them in red and the white ones. And I was in, I was in North Carolina, and I heard, I had a, uh, I think they're $10 for three, $4 a piece, and uh, I had a, what you call it, an open vision. And the Lord just absolutely showed me. I saw people, emaciated people, and they came forth, and they laid upon the word, and it was a dove with streamers, healing streamers coming out of the mouth, just like, just like the, that design there, and with healing scriptures coming out of his mouth. And uh, then the Lord told me to anoint it with oil from Israel. Of course, I could have gone to Kroger and bought some, but we flew to Israel to get it because I just, whatever the Lord says, we just go literally with it took a year to find someone who could design the dove that I actually saw in that open vision and came back home. And then we ended up making from that sheets and pillowcases. And, and uh, uh, it was actually sheets and pillowcases that I saw. I would see somebody come and lay upon the sheet with the scriptures on it, be covered over with the sheet, and lay the head upon the word, and then they would come up healed. Now, again, uh, there's nothing sacred about it. They're just pretty, hallelujah. But it is a place to release your faith. And, and uh, those, those healing scriptures are just wonderful. And we did the same thing because I'm a pet lover. And uh, so we made bandanas of all sizes and all colors. We did the same healing scriptures and everything on bandanas. We got some that fit horses fit uh, little teeny baby dogs and every kind of size and every kind of color you can think of. Now, see, you do what you believe. I have two wonderful dogs. They wear their bandanas every day. 
because I've prayed on them, I've anointed them with oil, and I have seen God do creative miracle, regrow bones, and, re and, and, and it's amazing in the dog. I've seen all kinds of things happen in dogs and cats and, and animals and horses and all kinds of things. It's where you put your faith and where you release it. Do you understand? It's what, what you believe in. And I believe that the Word of God is powerful and mighty, and that's the place just to release it. So there are some of those that are back there. And I wanted you to know what, what's back there. People ask me often, why is it it working? I've done everything you said to do. Why isn't it working? So I did a teaching on it. Why is it it working? Pertaining to healing. That CD is back there. This is the one about Velda. Faith and healing, it, I mean, faith and medicine, it is superb. If people have a hang-up about uh, taking medicine. Proving God, the book is there, but these are the CDs that the book came from. And this, people's lives have been totally, totally transformed w with this teaching. Matter of fact, in fact, this was a, I did this, I think, on Sid Roth program. They called me to come pertaining to this particular book, and they ended up saying it was just one of the greatest uh, blessings that they had from all over the nation that people responded back from that teaching of proving God. Your life would be blessed. This I did ages ago, but you have to believe this. It's impossible for God to lie. And I think it's uh, four CDs, actually, that can transform your life forever. This is a new one. It's your move uh, to healing and life. It is your move. God's, you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. There's not a person in this room that's waiting on God. Now, you've told yourself you're waiting on him, but no one's waiting on God. No one. It's your move, and that shows you how to move, how to go with it, and how to do uh, what God has called us to do. Is that it, Jane? Thank you. There's, a lot, there's other things back there, but I wanted you to know, and again, I hate to come talking about propaganda and selling magazines and or whatever we're trying to sell. But the point is, you wouldn't know what it was if I didn't tell you. You go to the table, you would not know what's available. I've been teaching healing so many years, uh, I pretty much know where people get hung up. And I said there's a, uh, when people want to do healing centers or want to understand how to have healing teams in your church, we have manuals, went through, uh, worked for a solid year with a lawyer, uh, doing manuals and all kind of things about how to do uh, uh, healing teams, how to do healing centers. We have all of that information. If we don't have it, you can order it. You can get it. You can come down to see us. We're in Augusta, Georgia. We'll tell you how. We will help you set up a healing center uh, or set up healing teams. Everybody, every church should have healing teams from my point of view. And uh, again, it, it'll take a while for the hospitals. It'll take a while before they'll let you come in. It will take a while because we've acted like, like nuts through the years. How I many of you know Christians act like a bunch of nuts? We have. You know, people say, well, if Jesus is in the healing business, why don't you just go down to the hospital and empty out the hospital? I'm not a healer. Jesus is the healer. And I have to be led by him, and I don't go in and pray over anybody without that invitation. The invitation tells me you're ready. The invitation lets me know that this is what you want. Now, sometimes the Lord will speak and say, pray for that particular person. And that's when the gift begins to come in operation, and I will. But we don't walk in the hospital. But I can tell you this. Every hospital around, 16 hospitals in 16 counties, five hospitals in Augusta, every single one of them let us come in. They call us in trauma units. The, the healing team has gone in before the family has gone in. And, and I give God glory and praise. I mean, the, the family had to allow the healing team to go in. Don't misunderstand me. Because everything is done in order and, and done the way God wants things to be done. But we've been in hospitals. We, not me. I don't do it. I teach people how to do it. It's sort of like our healing centers open every single day, Monday through Friday. But you can watch it live streaming on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's, it's uh, we, the whole concept behind the healing center is to have different teachers, different teachers, because you can, somebody you will receive from. If you don't see, receive from me, you receive from somebody else. The word doesn't change, the presentation changes. 
And our point is to just get you so that you can grab hold of it. So again, you can go to sandrakennedy.org and you can, you can watch us live streaming every Sunday morning. Hope you're at your own church. But you can pick us up later on archives. Every healing explosion that we have are on there. We, we, we keep them for a good little while. We uh, live stream. Sometimes we live stream our Monday night and our Thursday nights. And we always do our Sunday morning services are live, uh, are live streaming, but they're, they're archived. You can come watch and see what God is doing because we've had some fabulous moves of God. We've seen God do some unbelievable things lately, and we're not ashamed to show them on the television or to put them on Christian television. I mean, moves of God were that are unbelievable, the kind that you have read about uh, in and, and days gone by. We've just had God just do all kind of visitations in our church. We thank God for it. We've seen the winds of God blow through. We've had tremendous things happen. We've had drums play with no one up there. And, and, and all, I mean, all kinds of things that is just nothing but God Almighty in the presence of God. God's still in the miraculous healing demonstration business. He is still God. So, if you let him be God, honey, he will be God. So, you know, don't, don't put God down and don't think he's gone on vacation. And don't think that your situation is too hard for him. God is a miracle-working God. He's waiting on somebody to believe him. Hallelujah. And I'm waiting for the young people to grab hold of it. And I'm thankful. I, I get invitations to go and speak to youth groups or go to uh, camps and work in youth camps. I'm thankful for that. I am very thankful for that because they are hungry. They want to see. They want to know. I don't just preach to all of us old folks, hallelujah. I preach to them young folks too, glory to God, hallelujah, to, so they can grab hold, and I'm thankful they want to know. And, and not too long ago, last summer, whenever it was, I was at a, a youth camp, and I'm telling you, that for that entire week, I just did everything. I shot them with water, did everything they did, you know, right back. But I'm telling you, God came to that place and to see them, uh, the healings that took place and to find out. See, my desire is to pass that anointing on, pass that anointing on and teach them how to lay hands on each other. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And they know how. And I thank God for that. So say glory to God. How many of you are ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm just waiting to see what Jesus wants to do. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He's so fabulous. He's so wonderful. He's so outstanding. He's a good, good God. There's not any reason for you not to get the word in you. I completely believe that these end days technology is for the church. So you can be listening to your little MP3 players or whatever it is you're doing. I don't even know all the things that they do. I have them. I just can't half use them. But I got them, glory to God. And I hope you'll follow us on, on Twitter. I do that. I, I do all the tweets myself. And uh, even though you can follow us on Facebook and all kind of stuff, I don't really do all of that. My staff keeps up with that. But I do all the tweets myself, and try to give you an encouraging word to help you a nugget that will change your life because God says that nuggets will change your life. So I hope you will, you will keep up with, with all that's going on. We have a lot of things happening. I hope you will watch us on Church Channel. I hope you will watch us on the Word Network, and we're going to be going and taking some more airtime. So I'm thankful to God for that, and I give God all the praise and glory. If ever we're going to do something, now is the time. If ever you're going to do it, now is the time because there's too many things that are happening around the world that are shutting down Christianity. And if you don't know that, I don't know where you've been. So it's our time. It is our season. It is our time to shine, honey, and to take your stand and to occupy till Jesus comes. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got to occupy till Jesus comes. Well, Glory. I'm looking at you to see if y'all look like you're ready. Hallelujah. I'm trying to see if you look ready. Put a smile on your face. Glory to God. Put a smile on your face. All right. Let's go over back to 1 Thessalonians. Let's go back and look at that little scripture there and see what we can go from there. 
and what we can say about it. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. All right. For this cause, also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as if it is in truth the word of God. That is so important. You received the word as if it were in truth a word from God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now, I'm going to say it again because I, I said this is my third time to say this. I'm going to say it again. It's up to you. It's not up to God. God has already done everything God's going to do. I mean, he, he's done it. He's not up in heaven trying to decide, well, you know, I think I'll heal her. I'm not so sure about him, but I think I'll heal her. She's been pretty good. I'll heal her. No, that is not. None of us have been good enough to receive anything from God. I mean, let's get it straight. There's no one in here that deserves what God has done for us. Let's be real straight. Everybody in here deserves to go to hell. I want to hear you. I talk back to me. I'm saying every person here deserves to go to hell outside of Jesus. Glory to God. I may deserve it, but Jesus came in my life, and I want you to know I am not going to hell. Hallelujah. Woo. And for God to move in your life in might and in power, you have to be appreciative of what God has done. One of the missing elements with people is praise. They'll say, well, I don't, you know, this hadn't worked and that hadn't worked and whatever, 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 whatever. But the, if you, you stay praising God for what he has already done, we are not trying to get God to do anything. I mean, you... You can't even get God to stop the devil for you because God has already stopped the devil. Hello, church. I mean, you, you, the, the church continues to ask God to do things that God has already done. And the reason we do it, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So we beg God to do things again because we are ignorant. Look at your neighbor and say, we're just ignorant. But ignorance will not cut it. Hallelujah. You got a Bible. You got Christian television everywhere, Christian radio everywhere. You've got, you, you know, the CDs, the MP3 players, and all the other things that I can't even name. Hallelujah. But we, there's everywhere you turn, this is our season. This is the church's brightest moment. This is our time to shine. This is our time to live in the power and glory of God. This is time to let Jesus be seen in our life. This is time, I mean, to exalt him. Hallelujah. This is time to step out and let God be God. Now, I'm looking at some of y'all, and you absolutely look like you are dried prunes, and I want you to know right now, you need to poke up something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you need to get excited about what Jesus has done. Glory to God. It takes expectation. It takes an expectancy from God. Read your Bible. It takes an expectation. They came to Jesus. They came expecting the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with it. You know, Jesus will heal you any way you will let him heal you. I, I, you know, I don't even have time to tell you. I mean, Jesus will, he will let you determine how you want to be healed. From the Bible, and I'm just sticking with the Bible. I'm not talking about somebody else. I'm talking about the Bible. The Bible, the one with the issue of blood. She said, man, if I can just get to him, if I can just get to him, if I can touch the hem, she, it really was the, the, the tallit. He was wearing a tallit. If I can touch the blue, the blue, the blue string, if I can touch the tallit, if I can but touch him, I will be healed. Jesus did not give her that outline. She decided that. And Jesus said, it's all right with me. 
you remember Jairus? Jairus, just in front of that story, Jairus came to Jesus. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. Jairus came. Is anybody listening? I'm quoting Bible. You do know that. I'm talking faster than you can turn the pages, but you do know I'm in the Bible, don't you? All right. Jairus, you remember he was the ruler of the synagogue, and you remember he came, and he said his daughter was dying, his, his daughter who was 12, and the woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. Interesting little story there. But anyway, and so you remember he said to Jesus, if you will come lay hands on my daughter, she will be healed. Jesus said, fine, I'll go to your house and I'll lay hands on him. You remember? Do you remember the centurion who said, you don't even need to come to my house? So every single one of them designed their own program for healing. Now, I just gave you something. We ought to take up a collection over that one. Hallelujah. But every single one of them, every one of them gave an outline, their own outline of how they wanted to be. And Jesus said, fine, fine with every one of them. I love the one with the, with the centurion because it, it's, I can't imagine, I have a real difficult time, imagine Jesus volunteering to come to your house. He didn't ask Jesus to come. Jesus volunteered to come. And you remember, he said, you don't need to come to my house. You know, he said, I, the officer, you know, he said, you don't need to come to my house. And he said, Man, go to somebody else's house. I can just hear him. Go to somebody else's house. I understand I'm a man under authority. I understand I'm a military man. I understand authority. All I need is for you to speak the word. He turned Jesus down from coming to his house. Can you imagine such a thing? Now, if Jesus was coming to my house, you know, I'd be telling everybody in the neighborhood, Jesus is coming to my house. And don't act like you wouldn't. Now, some of us may have to go home and clean up the house. <laughs> Not only will we have to clean up the house, you may have to get some things out of the house. <laughs> you may want to get some things out of the refrigerator. You may want to get some things out from laying under the mattress cover. You may want to do certain things and you hope he does not go and look at your computer. You may want to relay some places you've been. You may want to make sure that he's not going to check out your computer. Hallelujah. And see, we act like, you know, uh, that, that, you know, that, that Jesus doesn't care about all these things and these things we do in the midnight hours and the darkness when everybody's asleep and we get up and we turn on that nasty, ugly. And then we wonder why we have a spiritual blockage. Well, I don't know why this isn't working. Well, honey, I know why. You got unforgiveness in your heart? You got a nasty attitude? Oh, I could give you, I've got a whole teaching on it. Glory to God. I'm not going to tell it to you, but I can tell you. Why do you have spiritual blockages? I can tell you what they are, and you can pick it up. I'll just go to one little page of it. A spiritual blockage. Strife, bitterness, contention, envy, resentment, pride, anger, jealousy, holding a grudge. Every single one that I just named will block a healing. Every single one of them. And I'm telling you, we sit here and we, say, we think, well, what's going on? I don't know. I, I mean, I did. I have so many people. I did everything you said, and it didn't work. Oh, yes, the Word does work. It does work. And if you've come tonight ready to receive what God has for you, you are going to be amazed. Go with me over to John chapter 4. You know what I said to the Lord today? I said, let's do a quick work tonight. Since I can't have anything to do with it anyway, except that he is speaking through me. And he, I didn't call and put myself in this job. He did. And I said, let's do a quick work. I said, they said they're ready. They've been coming. They've been saying all day long that the night was their night. So let's do a, let's do a, let's do a quick work. Let's, let's, let's let them get it. It doesn't take long. It takes a choice. It takes making up your mind and then stepping out in faith based on, based on what you say you believe. 
Now, the problem is we're living in a day and age, and as, as the older we get, we get worse about it, I have to admit. And what happens is that we're waiting for God to come and snatch you out of that chair and to God to push you down that aisle. And you're waiting on, on a feeling to know you got it. Well, that's very interesting too because there's only one place in the entire Bible that they got felt a feeling. Did anybody felt a feeling? One place. That's the one with this, your blood. One person out of all of the healings felt something. Y'all need to hear me because I'm, I pray for so many people and they didn't feel nothing. Didn't feel nothing. Did you get it? Didn't feel nothing. Hallelujah. One place in the Bible that, that a person felt something. One place in the Bible that Jesus felt something go out of him. And they're both the same place. They both have to do with the woman with the issue of blood. Will you please tell me then why in this world do we wait on feelings to tell us if Jesus has done something? Why do we do that? Why are you waiting? Well, I know I am. If when that knot is gone, bless God, when it's gone, then I'll know I'm healed. Well, any idiot would know they're healed when it's gone. <laughs> That doesn't take faith. That doesn't take one ounce of faith. God is a faith God. He is a faith God. You, and faith means you pray for him. What did I say? Believers shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So that when you believe that hands, when you make up your mind, when hands are laid on me, or if Jesus comes to my house, which by the way, he lives there. If you're there, uh, glory to God. You do know that, don't you? We didn't have to invite Jesus in this meeting tonight. You know he was in here when we came in. You, you do know that. You do know that he came in when you came in. And you do know that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So we didn't have to find him and bring him in here. Hello. Now, I'm hitting points where we, get, where we just overlook. But they're very pertinent points. They are pertinent points that, you, that we, you know what they are? They're religion. They're religion talking. Their religion, you know, their religion. You know, Jesus, go with me. I pray Jesus will go with you. Well, if you don't go with me, he's a liar. He says he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And I don't mean you can't say, thank you, Jesus, you're with me. There's a whole big difference in accepting the fact that you believe when he said he wouldn't leave you, he won't leave you. There's a big difference in saying, please go with me and saying difference, difference, and saying, thank you, I know you're going to go with me because you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. You say, you are nitpicking. No, I'm trying to get you to understand the Word and how God works. Hallelujah. Now, don't y'all stare at me in that kind of look. Come on, help me out. Come on. Come on. You want the truth, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You want to know the truth, don't you? Hallelujah. The truth. So, we, we need to get back to what the Bible teaches. So, we are waiting, you know, you're waiting on God to do something. We're waiting on, oh, let's let the winds blow. Well, I'd love for them to blow. I can't make them blow. Hallelujah. I can't make them, you know. Matter of fact, the first time the winds ever blew through our church, the first time, I'll tell you what a great woman of faith I was. I said, turn off the air conditioner. <laughs> I just knew it. I saw the plants. They were just, you know, blowing everywhere. And I said, turn the air conditioner off. Except they were blowing everywhere. And, and uh, I couldn't figure it out. So I said, what's happening? Great woman of faith. Great woman of faith. It's happened several times. Or the time we were with the, uh, as I said, we were a relatively large church. And then these people came in, and then the dew of God fell on them. It didn't fall on me. It fell on everybody else. They came telling me. They didn't have to tell me. I could see it on them. And I know what you're thinking. Well, what good did that do? I have no idea. <laughs> Except... They all got excited about God. Hallelujah. 
and they got open to God. And then I had to process how come I got left out. You know, you have to be real about things. You have to be real about things. Or somebody had come up on the front and they said, you know, you lay hands on people. I could have, I, you know, I've laid hands on so many people and, and the whole place be laid out. And then I've laid hands on the whole place and not a single person be laid out. And so I, I came to the conclusion I didn't have anything to do with it. And I also came to the conclusion that it had nothing to do with whether somebody got healing or not. Because God is a faith God. God is a faith God. And you said, you just said you heard the drums play. I did. I did. That was, a, that was quite a, a number. There wasn't anybody on the stage. I was down there. And the drums started playing. And men, we all looked at the drums. Everybody's looking at the drums. And great woman of faith. Am I the only one who heard that? <laughs> Everybody in the sanctuary heard it. And then they wanted to know, what does it mean? I have no earthly idea. <laughs> See, you have to be careful when you're in positions or you'll try to act like God and act like you know what's going on. And... If you aren't careful, you'll make up something. Don't say you won't, you will. I've heard too many. And I learned a long time ago, I don't know. Hallelujah, I don't know. People ask me questions all the time. They want to know, and I'll say, well, I don't know, but I'll find the answer. And God does end up showing me the answers. Now, he didn't show me why he played them drums, hallelujah. And so to confirm it, he did it again another night, hallelujah. One night he did it in the chapel, which is about this size. And then another night later on, years later, he did it in the main sanctuary. I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was that prayer time. We're leaving. You know what he played? Our God is an awesome God. <laughs> We're walking out the door. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing on the drums, our God is an awesome And I, I just kind of stopped. And a lot of people had already left. Listen, don't be, hurry to leave. don't be in a hurry to leave church. <laughs> Most of the things I'm telling you about happened to the crowd that stayed behind. The crowd that was trying to get into the church before the Baptist, I mean, to the restaurant before the Baptist got there, they missed it. You got to slow down. And I mean, I couldn't believe it. I turned. Y'all hear what I hear? Is it playing what I think it's playing? Great woman of faith. What did you do? I listened. Now, what would you have done? <laughs> Listen. And then I said, <laughs> golly, <laughs> can you believe those drums played? We were all in the back going out the door. Of course, we came back in real fast. And we just stood there. And then we decided to sing with the drums. Now, this is a crazy story. You're singing with drums, and there's nobody up there. <laughs> now, I'm aware that after I tell all of this, I may not be invited back. <laughs> and, you know, and before I be started teaching, I was a director of mental health centers. I have a degree in psychology. <laughs> I read in no book where that happened. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we just sang. As long as it played, we sang. But let me tell you, what happened? You say, well, what happened? What good did it do? That's what, you know, skeptics like to do. That's what religion does. Now, I got your number. We got some religious folks in here. What good did that do? Well, what it really did, we were all in awe. 
And then we said, we told everybody we knew, y'all are not going to believe this. The drums played, and it played Awesome God. And they all said, oh, you know that didn't happen. Well, I know it did, bless God. I was there, hallelujah. Well, why did God do that? I don't know. Except all of us who are there will never forget it. And we all realize what an awesome God. And every time we go, we're wondering when we go hear it again. Hallelujah. See, you have to have this expectancy about you. You've got to be expecting God, expecting God to do something. Expecting him to do something. Then there was that night, there was that night, that this child, this child, we were having... 24-hour, no, 12-hour prayer, 12-hour prayer. We did them for a year, 12-hour prayer every Friday night. And I led them every single time. Did we go to sleep? Did we bring our pillars and lay on the, no, we did not. We prayed. And the young, and the children were there, and they came and they prayed. Matter of fact, we took the entire phone book, and we prayed over every person in the phone book. But anyway, we did all kind of crazy things. But anyway, and... This particular night, a young, a young child, a young child, so many people, all of a sudden, the power of God came in the place. I didn't have a thing to do with it. The power of God came in the place, and people started falling out everywhere. Falling out everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. And there was the night that Jesus walked down the center of the aisle. Oh, that's another story. Okay, let me come back to the. All right. The young child was, was down here. People were falling all down the aisles, all down the aisles. People were laying everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. And this child began to dance with her eyes closed. She danced. I'm telling you, there were hundreds of people on the floor. She danced around, never touched a one. And praise God, went up and down and went around through people, never opened her eyes. Now, listen, I got witnesses. Am I telling the truth? Thank you. That's my three witnesses. Hallelujah. Now. <laughs> Out of the mouth of two or three people, let a thing be established. Now, and I mean to tell you, it was amazing. It was amazing what happened. And then the night when we were in prayer, and all of a sudden, now I don't mean that he was visible, but everybody knew there was a, there was a chair on the stage. And everybody knew, without me saying it, that they, Jesus came down the aisle, came up on the stage and sat in the chair, and without anybody saying anything, listen to me, I just want you to know how crazy I am and get it over with, okay? <laughs> they, came, they came up to the chair. It, it was a big uh, wing back chair. They came, and children and everybody, without anybody saying it, began to come up, and they would lay their head, like they were laying their head on the lap of Jesus, burst out crying, God restored marriages. God did all. Nobody said anything. It's the expectation. Did I tell you all to come tonight expecting? Yeah. Come expecting God to do something. You know, come to do something. I was actually here at Blue Mountains. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, when somebody had a club foot right over there, and I mean that foot went, boom, right in front of And I said, oh, I can hardly, did y'all see that? And I mean, right in front of my face, that club, I mean, it was a terrible club foot, and it went shoo, straightened out right in front of my face. And I couldn't believe it. I had, I had somebody who, I said, did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see that? Now, here the woman was that had the club foot already straightened out. I didn't ask her. I asked somebody else. Did you see that? <laughs> totally straightened out in front of us. I have seen so many things that I am absolutely awestruck. Been teaching like this and people jump up in the middle of the teaching and all kind of things happen when they just jump up. They weren't waiting on God to do anything. They said, dear God, God's in the place. I'm taking it. Hallelujah. And they jumped up and got it. They jumped up and got it. Then people, people would be afraid to get up and, 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 and uh, you know, they, they can't walk. So they're afraid to get up, afraid they'll fall down. You know what I say to them? We'll pick you back up. Do something. Move on God. Expect God. And don't say God's not doing something for you. Don't say, did y'all find John chapter 4? If not, just close your Bibles completely. Did you find it? All right. Now, this is the story. It's one of my favorite stories. 
It is one of the most amazing. This is where Jesus heals an official son. I have taught on it here before. I teach on it everywhere. I love this little story. It is so amazing. It starts in verse 46 of chapter 4, John chapter 4. So Jesus came into Canaan of Galilee where he made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Now, now listen to this. When he heard, I've said for years, if I can get you to hear, I can get you healed. If I can just get you to really hear. Now, let me tell you what you're going to hear. You're going to say, well, you know what? The, and people come in the healing lines and they tell me, the doctor said, I don't care what the doctor says. I don't even want to hear what the doctor says. Why do I want to hear what the doctor says? I'm not a healer. And the more you repeat what the doctor says, the more you're going to believe what the doctor said. Thank God for doctors. Don't misunderstand me. Go to a good one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't let some heathen cut on you. Dear God, get you somebody who knows Jesus. Hallelujah. But, you know, but I'm just saying to you that, that uh, uh, you, you know, you just got to make your mind up about what you're going to do with the things of God and where you stand with the things of God and what's, where, where you, what you really believe about the things of God. I mean, that's up to you. So here this God was, says, and I've said, if I can get you to hear, if I can just get you to hear, not hear what the, what the medical report says, not hear what the uh, C-scan did, no, to hear, to really hear that Jesus believes you are healed. And you're not trying to get healed. You are trying to release what he has already put in you. It's already in you. So here we are. Here's this guy. He comes. He heard that who Jesus was. This was a nobleman. This was one a Jew. This was a nobleman. Here he was. He heard about Jesus. What do you think he heard? He heard Jesus was a healer. He wasn't one of the disciples. He heard about Jesus and said, I'm going to where that man is. That's exactly what he did. He came and he said, so, so he came and he besought Jesus that he would come and heal his son. Because his son was at the point of death. 48. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. In other words, he kind of scolded him for a second. He says, this generation, you want to see something happen. It's sort of like us. If God would have come in here in might and power, a breeze would begin to blow, something would begin to happen, somebody jumped up, and somebody said, bless God, I got it. You know what would happen? Faith would go all across this building. It would just go every kind of direction. And Jesus is saying, you're waiting to see something happen before you'll do anything. And that's where the church world is today. And then he says, Jesus said, and then the nobleman said, you know, sir, please come on down or my son's going to be dead. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your son liveth, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken on him and went his way. It took him a couple of days. I just, I'm amazed. I am amazed how this man, whose son was dying before he left home, how in this world he just heard a word from Jesus who was, Jesus was not his best friend. He wasn't his buddy. He wasn't traveling with him. He didn't know. He wasn't a Jew. He wasn't involved. And he, Jesus just turned to him and said, go on, your son's living. The man actually did it. That's an amazing story. Because all the way back home, all the way, he did not have a scripture book. He did not have a New Testament. None of the disciples had a New Testament. You do know that. You do understand that Jesus taught out of the Old Testament. He did not teach out of the New Testament. None of the disciples had one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Much less King James. But I'm just saying to you, I'm saying, this man, here he goes, and look at him. And he was now going, his servants met him and told him, your son liveth. Then required he of them, when did he begin? Begin, pay attention, begin to amend. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you will believe tonight, if you will grab hold, 
Some of you will instantaneously see something happen. The majority, the majority, you will begin to amend. I've had people ever since I've been here, ever since I arrived, people have come. They came last night. They came this morning. Every single service, people have been telling me what God did for them in previous meetings that I've been here. And that most of them said, after a couple of days, after a couple of weeks, after this, all of a sudden, all the pain left. All, it's all been gone. It all left me. It left. It, because they began to amend the moment they received. And then you know the end of the story. You know the end of it. Is that they, and, and so he found out that the very minute Jesus said, go home, that the son was healed. And so he came on home, and it says that, and, and uh, so he went on home, and he said his whole house believed. His whole house believed. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and we just go let Jesus do what he wants to, okay? Because if this man can believe, this man, when he turned around and walked home, you think you have a hard time. I think I have a hard time. Well, they prayed over me, and I didn't feel anything. Did you get it? I've decided I don't even like asking people that anymore. It's what you say. Did you get it? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Could you pray one more time? <laughs> now, I'm telling you what happens constantly. Listen, I was in this meeting. I was in this meeting down in Florida and uh, at the the Brownsville revival type thing. I went after the revival basically had, had, had gone. But anyway, I was speaking down there. And the place was packed. And I taught on healing. And, uh, and the Lord said to me, don't lay hands on anybody. Which often he says that to me. Often. Don't lay hands on anybody. Now, at the beginning of my ministry years ago, before I began to pastor, I traveled everywhere and would lay hands on people. And I mean, I've seen heard, literally heard, people who were so bent over and could not stand up, and I would hear the bones go pop, 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 and, and, and hear it go, and blind eyes. I mean, just amazing things, all from laying hands on people. And But as the time has gone by, Jesus has taught me over and over again, they can get it without laying on hands. Sometimes he'll say lay hands, and sometimes he won't. So I don't know. But at this particular meeting, he said, don't lay hands on anybody. So I finished teaching, and I told the pastor, I said, uh, Jesus just said to me not to lay hands on anybody, and that he, that they've got it, they can get it, they got it. I don't know how many people, that make 1,500, I've forgotten what size the auditorium was. But anyway, the bottom line, no sooner had I said that, no sooner had I said that, than he picks up the microphone, and he says, anybody who wants Dr. Kennedy to pray for him, come on down and she'll pray for him. I just said, Jesus said, don't lay hands on anybody. Don't pray for anybody. Now, what am I going to do? The Lord saved me. Nobody came. <laughs> when I'm there, I'm under the authority of the pastor. I've had that happen so many times, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. But I'm saying, this guy now, here's this guy. He's going home, doesn't have a scripture book, doesn't have a New Testament. He did not record them on his phone, what Jesus said. <laughs> Jesus did not say it but one time. And what did he say? Pay attention. What did he say? He simply turned to him, and Jesus said, Go your way, your son liveth. Now, that's all he said. Go your way, your son liveth. Here's this man who is not a believer per se, we would say. And what in this world? Jesus simply looks at him. The guy says, you got to come. My son is dying. And Jesus says, after he kind of scolds him, read it. He said, this whole generation just wants to see signs and wonders. Then they'll believe. That is what he said. And then he said to him, he said, go your way, your son's living. I am astounded that this man could turn away. 
with one word from Jesus. He did not have a scripture to quote all the way back home. He just had to, I think this is what he said, because Jesus said it one time. And it took two days to go back home. Read the story. Read the story. If you don't think hell didn't visit that man, you think you have trouble? You want to think that hell did not all the way say to him, your son will be dead when you get home. You don't even know this man. And on top of that, half of the Pharisees don't believe in him. His own people do not believe in him. And if you don't want to think hell did not torment hell out of him all the way home, then you are crazy because that's what the devil does. He does that to us with the scripture book. He does that to us with the word. He does that with an MP3 player. He does it with a CD. He does it with whatever. He does that to us, and we've got the word constantly that we can switch it back on and hear it over and over and over again. We can carried around in our pocket. We can do anything with it, and we still don't believe. This man is a mighty man. He had two voices going on, just like you do, just like I do. Is this real? Dare I say I got it? I don't know. What if I say I got it and I don't really have it? What if I jump up and I make a fool out of myself? Jesus will never let you make a fool out of yourself. What if I say I got something and, and, and I don't really have it because I don't feel it? I mean, what, what if, I mean, when I feel it, I'll jump up and tell them I got it. And whoopie do. I mean, that's great. But what if you don't feel anything? What if, what if we just say, in the name of Jesus, you are healed by the authority invested in me in the name of Jesus. I call you healed in Jesus' name. Stand up and walk. Now, you, you go have a battle. You go have a battle, and you got the person there in front of you. Jesus did not walk home with him, nor did he send a disciple home with him. All the way home, he had to battle. My son, gonna, is he dead? Is he alive? He was dying when I left. This man would not go home with me. And Jesus didn't. This man did not go home with me. He did not go home with me. That man had to hold on. I'm telling you. And he had his, but he said he's, he said he's alive. He said he's going to live. He said he's going to live. I don't know if he's truthful or not, but he said he's going to live. He had to hold on to it. And he did. And it was so amazing that everybody believed. So, the last thing I'm going to explain to you, then we'll just see what you do. Because I already know what Jesus has done. Now, I mean, I don't have to ask Jesus what he's going to do. Matter of fact, one Sunday morning, I walked in church, and I was sitting on the front row because I sit on the front row, and I sit on the front row, and I said, Jesus, what are you going to do today? He says, I'm going to heal so-and-so. And he's only done that. I hadn't had him do that very many times. And, uh, and he said, I'm going to heal so-and-so, and they're wearing this and name what he was wearing. And I thought, okay. And uh, I looked around. I didn't see anybody look like that. <laughs> my first mistake was looking around. That was my first mistake. But that's a normal reaction to see if you can find him to make sure Jesus really knew he was there. To make sure that Jesus really knew what he was talking about. Come on. I couldn't see him. So it left me in a quandary. What was I going to do? I looked everywhere. I mean, I peeped every direction. <laughs> and it was obvious that this man, whomever it was, was not somebody I knew. Because, I mean, I looked everywhere. I didn't see anything. But I, I was, and for a moment, a moment, that's how Jesus does For a moment, I was caught to make a decision. That's the same way it happens with you. For a moment. So you're here where if you teach on healing, the healing anointing is everywhere. It's all over this place because I'm teaching on it. That's scripturally sound. It's released. 
So it's all over the place. And so for a moment, I thought, well, okay, I'm going to go for it. And I simply said, there's somebody here, blah, 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 blah. And I just said everything Jesus said. Nobody moved. I said it again. And here comes this person from in the back who was a visitor that I had never laid eyes on. He was instantly healed of exactly what Jesus said he had. Now, he had on the exact clothes that Jesus, I couldn't see him. Plus, he'd never been in the church ever. He got born again. Healed. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All at one time. Glory to God. Now, let me explain so that you will, there will be nothing that will stop you from understanding. You three ladies right there, come here a minute. Let me explain it. Come on up here with me. Hallelujah. If you will get this, that I teach him right there, it goes in depth about this. But if you'll get this, you'll get it. All right, come on, yeah, stand up here so they can see you good, okay? Now, just everybody turn face him that way. All right. Now, you, can everybody see them or do I need to put them here? Are we all all right? Okay. The Bible says you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. All right, so you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. That's true for everybody. If you get this, it'll free your mind. You are a spirit. Everybody is a spirit whether you're born again or not. Everybody is a spirit. And you make a decision where you're going to live. Spirits do not die. You can't kill spirits. Spirits don't die. So the question is, is where you're going to live. And when you get born again, when you get born again, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, moves inside of your born again spirit man. Are you with me? So all, all of these make up you, okay? When you get born again, the Spirit of God comes inside of you. He does not come piecemeal. Everything about the Holy Spirit comes inside of you the moment you are born again. Now, listen very closely to me. It was the Holy Spirit who did the healing when Jesus was here. I'm trying to see how much you know your Bible. The Holy Spirit moved through Jesus after the Jordan experience came upon him, and then the power of God, the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God, is the one who did the healing through Jesus. Am I on Bible or not? So the Holy Spirit moved inside of your spirit, man. All of God moved inside of you. Then you have a soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. And then you live in a body. The body's sick. The body's sick. All right, here you are with the healing power. If you're born again, the healing power of God is inside, totally inside of every born-again believer right now. Tonight, the moment you were born again, all of the healing power of God came inside of you. Well, why come I don't feel it? This is why. Because your soul, because it has to pass through your soul, to your body. And the problem is the soul, your thinking, your thinking processes. This is the filter. You have to clean this filter. You have to get TV out of it, magazines out of it, internet out of it. You got to get false teaching, false, your tradition and your religion. You've got to clean your mind so that the power of God can go through your soul to your body. Are you listening to me? Now, God Almighty saves the spirit man. You cannot do that. When you invite him in, you, you, I am spirit, me, I at that moment am born again. Now, 
the Bible says in James that the Word of God is able to save your soul. Now, let me tell you why we have problems with this. Because we have for years used the wrong definitions. We'll say, so many souls got born again. If you, you know, but what the really truth is, so many spirits got born again. Now, I'm not going to change the world and make them change that, so I even say it myself. Hallelujah. But I do know what I mean. Hallelujah. So, your soul, this is what the Bible teaches about transforming your mind. In Romans, you have to, trans, you have to renew your mind. Now, what are you doing to renew your mind? Two against one wins. If you have your soul, which is squirrely, and your soul is squirrely, what do I mean by squirrely? You think things that are opposite of what God's Word is. That's being squirrely. That's being crazy. That's you saying that God's Word's not so. Are you listening? So you've got to get that crazy thinking. The Bible says only the Word of God will get your crazy thinking straight. If you don't get your crazy thinking straight, then your soul and your body, two against one, is going to win. So you're going to have all of the healing power of God inside of you, and it's not going to work at all because you haven't cleaned up your thinking. It can't even get to you. Because you've decided, this may not be the will of the Lord. This may not be my time. Blah, 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 blah. And all of that is blocked right here. And yet all of the healing power of God is here. Trying to get to the body. Because the body is just here for the ride. The body's here for the ride. This body is not born again. This is not the body you're going to have in heaven. That's what the Bible says. You have one that looks like you, but it's not this one. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, some of you ought to really be shouting over that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, now. Now, again, so we've got to get the filter. We've got to get your thinking so that it lines up with the Spirit. You've got to get where you think the thoughts of God, that you agree with God. Two against one wins. You get your thinking and your spirit together, then what's in the spirit man, that healing will flow through this soul straight to this body, and this body will begin to amend. It will respond to the Word. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Now, that's how it works. That is the simple version of how it really does work. It's, it matters what you think. I'm going to tell you again. It matters what you think. And you've got to make up your mind. You're either going to believe what God says or you're not. And the only way that you're going to... Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. And as you hear, you get knowledge. It is knowledge that you need. You need knowledge, the knowledge I just gave you. The knowledge I just gave you can transform your life. You're wondering where the problem is. The problem is, instead of spending your time in the Scriptures, quoting the Word, looking in the mirror and say, you hear me, body, you're healed in the name of Jesus. You better talk to yourself and look in that mirror and say, bless God, hallelujah, I'm who God says I am. You hear me, body, you get with the program. And you got to begin to talk to yourself and talk to yourself. God says I'm healed, so I must be healed. Hallelujah. You wake up, body. I mean, you got to speak to it. You got to talk to yourself. Or you can turn on your TV. Glory to God. You got it back there. Hallelujah. I believe she got it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. I said you can get it. Proclaim it. 
take it. Make it yours. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Here comes the winds of God, the power of God, the power of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Do you know what the question really is? What would you do if you really knew you were healed. What would you do? Some of you would jump. Some of you would run. Some of you would shout. Some of you would try to do something you have never done before because that's what faith is. It has an action to it. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you couldn't raise your arm, throw your arm in there. I thought you couldn't raise your arm. Hallelujah. If you can't raise your arm, throw your arm in there. Come on. Come on. Keep talking to it. Throw your arm in there. Throw your arm in there. You couldn't move your knee. Begin to do what you couldn't do. No matter. Every little bit. Just begin to do it. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You cannot sit there and talk yourself out of what God's doing at this moment. God's all over this place. If you couldn't bend, bend, hallelujah. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And the more you praise him, the more you praise him, the more the power of God will come in the place. Hallelujah. Jeez. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 All right, listen to me. Listen to me one minute. Listen one more minute. Maybe you're sitting there and you don't have enough energy to do anything. That's okay. But you do have energy to make up your mind you got it. You got enough to say, you know, I, I got this thing. The doctor, you said there's a cancer, there's a tumor, there's this, there's heart problem, blah, 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 blah. All the things. You make up your mind. Jesus, I take you as my healer. And when I go back to the doctor, I'm going to get a good report. Hallelujah. I'm getting a good report. 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 Jesus does not give out bad reports. But you have to take it. You have to take it. You have to take it. What's happening with this crowd over here? You getting it? You getting it? You getting it? You getting it? Y'all better say something. I'm going to come hit you with the mic. Hallelujah. You getting it? You getting it? What are you getting? The fact that Jesus has already healed you. You're getting the fact that Jesus is still in the healing business. You're getting the fact that you are releasing in you what he has already deposited in you. That you're giving it a chance to move through your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The more you praise him, 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 the more you thank him. God's all over this place. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pain, go. Pain, go. Come on, let's lock it together. Pain, go. Pain, go. In the name of Jesus. Pain, go. Pain, go. Pain, go. Pain, go in the name of Jesus. Now, let's just say this. Watch what's going to happen. Let's just say this. Jesus. 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 Fall in love with him. Jesus. Jesus. Watch the pain go. Jesus. 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 What a God. What a God. What a God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. All right, let me ask a question. How many of you know that you know that you know, that you know, that the healing power of God has been loosed in your body. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You loose it by decision, yeah. by just making your mind up. He's my healer, bless God. He's my healer. He's my healer. I tell you what, give me a couple of testimonies real fast. Tell me what's happening real fast. Tell me what happened. Make them short. Make them short. I was in the hospital last week for vertigo. Uh -huh. I couldn't do this without being dizzy. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm fine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I got it. Whoa. In my soul. Oh, my God. I had tumors uh -huh. on my side, uh -huh. on my spine, uh -huh. and on my shoulder. Uh -huh. And I could feel it. 
I don't feel it now. After dinner, I was in the bathroom and I got so dizzy. And I thought it was sugar or whatever. But I believe tonight that no more sugar, no more high blood. And I always danced before the Lord, so I fell and hurt my knee. And I was saying tonight, Lord, I will dance for you again. I want to dance before the Lord. Well, honey, I believe you can do it. Hallelujah. I believe you can do it. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You can do it. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can do it. Somebody else tell me. Somebody else tell me what God's done for you. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Yes. Fifteen years of schizoaffective disorder and kidney failure, Epstein-Barr virus, diabetes, high blood pressure, everything. Everything. Gone? Gone. <laughs> and your doctor will prove it. Your doctor will prove it. Somebody else tell me. Somebody tell me. Tell me what God's done for you. Somebody tell me. My shoulder was so sore I couldn't lift my arm at all. Now look at it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody else tell me. Somebody tell me. Tell me what God's done. I came here because I know I will have my healing. <laughs> no, he's already given it to you, honey. Anybody, anybody else know? Anybody know what? What? What do you feel like God's done? You said you know it. What do you think he's done? You healed? You sure? Positive. Positive. All right. Hallelujah. How many, other, how many other people are absolutely positive? I mean, you're positive. I'm going to go with this crowd over here. This crowd. Let's see what this crowd. No pain. I had pain right here. And I usually, I usually move. I usually move. And I had pain right here. I don't have that pain no more. Well, hallelujah. Whoa. Whoa. Woo. I believe she got it. I thank God for Jesus. I had my eyes. My eyes was dim. I had a cataract. But now I can see and I had pain. So you see how pretty I look tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. And I had pain in my, my knees and I don't have pain. Praise God. Pain in the knees gone. Hallelujah. I was in the wheelchair for four years. Okay. <laughs> my God, what a God. This is my daughter coming. She's been taking care of me. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus is wonderful. Yeah. I, I was actually completely bedridden uh, that I couldn't get out of bed for four and a half months. My sister came and took care of me, and she wouldn't let me die. Praise <laughs> God. Praise God. She wouldn't let me die. Okay. Okay. I didn't, didn't I see you running around there a while ago? Yeah. I thought I did. I thought Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful what God That's did? wonderful. <laughs> Jesus is wonderful. I believe it. My God is an awesome God. My God is an awesome God. My God is an awesome God. Isn't he wonderful? Yes, sir, ma'am, he is. I see him all over you. Of course. He's all over you. He is. He's all over you. Come on. You're going to see some major changes. You're going to see some major changes, honey. I mean, very quickly, you're going to see some major changes. You ain't going to need that. You ain't going to need that. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to tell me something? Come on. Hallelujah. Let's give God glory. Let that, now, listen, you can't say you think you got it and then not tell me what you got. I was 32 years old many years ago, and I was told I was going to die. And uh, That wasn't so. It wasn't so. I'm 73, and I went to an auto call, and I felt a sizzle go down my spine, and it was healed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah! Anybody else want to tell me? Yeah. Not tonight, but when, when my mother got pregnant with me, 
and the doctor told her she could. She was 42, and the doctor told her that, that it wasn't going to happen, you know. And three times we went to the, to the hospital and kidney failure and all this mess. And finally they told her that she could not have a living child. And if by some accident she did have a living child, it would be so deformed it couldn't live long. And if it didn't die, it would be so retarded it would have to be institutionalized. He was a Southern Baptist preacher. Hallelujah. You listen to me. You yes, won't need that long. Hallelujah. I just want to say it's, it's not a physical healing, but God has turned things around for me. He said that to me in this seat. Glory to God. And I receive it. Hallelujah. It's mine. Things are turned around for me. I have been going through a whole lot of torment in my mind, a whole lot of fear. But I thank God that tonight I am free. Glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want y'all to tell me what's happened tonight to encourage people. You follow me? <laughs> we with you, honey. Come on. I was given a death sentence by the doctor, but I'm not going to live much longer. That's a lie. And I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. We stand we life you, honey, with the word of the Lord. You're going to live a long time. You're going to live and not die and give God glory. We break that thing. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. This evening, I receive a creative miracle. I know as I was sitting there lifting my hands, praising the Lord, I felt on this left side, I had damage to it. I cannot see. God is creating a new eyeball for me, and I received it to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, before I close up, anybody over here got anything you want to tell me about? I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, you just make your mind up. You want to say something? I got it. You got it? I got it. I believe you got it, son. I stand with you 100%. You know what? I see it in your eyes. You got it, don't you? You got it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Want to give? All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I've had this lump on the back of my leg for I don't know how long. And I'm driving here. I, I could barely pass you know, while I was driving, it just hurt. And I'm sitting here as you were talking early, before, even before we started praising. I don't, I don't feel it. Actually, I hurt my leg now, pushing, trying to feel the lump, and it's gone. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wasn't going to say anything because, you know, the enemy was telling me just to keep it to myself. But I had a lot of pressures in the back of my head and my right eye. I couldn't really see it. I was just always dizzy, not feeling well, sinus infections, and just not, the doctor's not finding anything, praise God. But the enemy was trying to just keep putting it on me, and no one was able to tell me what was wrong. All I can tell you is that I did get it, and I feel like I'm so blessed that I had to share with everyone that I am healed in the name of Jesus. Glory! <laughs> Hallelujah! Now, before you go, let me remember this. If you will just keep thanking him and keep praising him. Some of you that are waiting just to see something, you're scared to say something because you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, don't want to tell something that's wrong. How can you tell something wrong when God says you got it? Now, but, but listen carefully to me. Listen carefully. There's some people in here that had some lumps on your breast. And when you go to check it out, you go find out you don't have them. They're going to be gone. Okay. Now, and... All that has happened, just keep praising God. Because before you get to your car, before you get to your room, before you get, the devil will try to hit you and tell you it's not true. But what you have to do is say, the devil is a liar. God is not a man that he should lie. I receive. So we do it the same way. I received him as my Savior. I receive him. We can mark it. Go home. What is the day? The 20 what? What is the day? 25th? Go write it on your Bible. On October the 25th, 2014, I received Jesus as my healer. Yeah. 
and don't move off of it. And, you, and when the devil comes to tell you something different, you say, devil, I don't know if you can read or not. So come in, let me read this to you. And this is what happened to me. And while you're reading it to him, if I was you, I'd read the end of the book where he burns forever in the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all have been so wonderful. Thank you for letting me come. You are the church. Born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, filled with the power and might of God, cleansed and redeemed and set free. You are the kingdom of God walking on this earth. You're the light in the darkness. You are the smile of God on this earth. You are walking in his might and in his power. And when you go to heaven, whenever it is, you say, wait a minute, St. Peter, there's a pile coming behind me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You show forth his glory. You are the head. You are not the tail. You walk in might and power. You are the healed of the Lord. God is on your side, and he is in his palm. Your name is written. God is not mad with you. God cares about you. May sweet dreams, sweet sleep, the presence of God come upon you, and may when you awaken in the morning, may absolutely the first thing out of your mouth is glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Love you. Good night, folks.